Modular synths. Half spaceship, half cursed spaghetti, full awesomeness. They're a wonderful avenue to explore new ways of creating music to the point of creating your own instrument from scratch every single time. But they're notoriously difficult to get started with. So by the end of today's video, you're gonna know what the most essential modules do, how you can begin to manipulate sound, how you can automate those manipulations, and you'll see how you can get started for absolutely free. Everyone I've explored modular synthesis with, ranging from artists to dancers, to students, to other musicians, everyone's left the session with a brand new appreciation for the very nature of sound itself. The flexibility is madness. Everything from a chunky synth bass to a generative ambient dream sequence that she could get lost in for hours. However, there are two humongous barriers to entry to this beautiful world of flashing lights and video game noises. First and most obvious one, is the extremely expensive starting point. Some of these modules, some of these modular systems can cost upwards of a car, upwards of a house, upwards of a mansion. Damn, what is that, bro? And the second one is the extremely steep learning curve. Now, the first barrier to entry has been significantly lowered by the developers over at BCV Rack. It's a free, mostly open source Eurorack simulator with a host of thousands of free modules and plugins and several high quality premium ones as well. It can function standalone as its own DAW and yes, it is considered a digital audio workstation or you can use it as a plugin within your DAW of choice. All the music you're gonna hear in today's video was made on VCV Rack using entirely the free plugins. Now that second barrier to entry I'll do my best to help you guys with. So if you wish to follow along, go ahead and download VCV Rack on your Mac, Windows, or Linux device of choice using the link in my description. Pause the video, come back here when you're done, and let's make some cool noises together. Let's make some cool noises together. That shit, that sounded weird. All right, so the first thing we want to ask ourselves when we're dealing with synthesizers is... What is sound? All sound is, essentially, is a wave. In the real world, we have compression waves, where it's air molecules vibrating really fast going back and forth that help sound travel from the source to our ears. In the world of synthesizers, we can have very basic waves that are simply a voltage going up and down in, say, a sine wave, or using different wave shapes to have different sound characteristics. So let's head over to VCV Rack and see what that looks like. Right, let's not let ourselves get bogged down by the sheer number of modules and plugins we have available to us. So first things first, we need an oscillator, or a VCO, a voltage-controlled oscillator. We can just take the sine output of this oscillator into our mixer and that's gonna let us hear it. All right, so when you're listening to a pure wave, that's what it sounds like. Let's make things a little bit more interesting. I have a MIDI controller connected over here, the Arturia Mini Lab. I'm gonna take the volts per octave output of that and connect it to the volts per octave pitch input of my VCO. Volts per octave is how synthesizers can communicate pitch using voltage. That allows me to control this oscillator's pitch using that MIDI controller. But here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take a filter, we're gonna run this saw wave through the filter and get a low pass. I like that about that. Cool, so now we get to shape the character of our sound a little bit. It's still missing something. It has no start, it has no end. There's no defined way to know when I've played a note. And that is where envelopes come in. So an envelope generator allows us to control the volume of our signal over time. Let's run the output of our filter into the input of that amplifier, the output of that amplifier to our overall output, but we take this envelope output and we put that into the control voltage input of our amplifier. You'll notice 
you can't hear anything unless I push that button to activate this envelope. Any input anywhere on my synthesizer that allows me to trigger with this button, I can use that to trigger this envelope. So let's take that gate input, connect that to the gate output from our MIDI controller. Control over when we hear a note and when we do not. That's awesome. Now I can begin to shape the sound a little bit closer to what an instrument might sound like. So let's take an LFO or a low frequency oscillator. Let's take the output of that and connect it to the frequency input of our VCF. And we can bump up the attenuation on that by a little bit. Now we'll have a sound that's kind of breathing and evolving over time. And now we have a basic synthesizer that we can play like an instrument. So that's cool. Now, oscillators being controlled by one volt per octave is how we get pitch into modular synthesizers. Congratulations, you've made your first basic subtractive synthesizer. That's stage one. Moving on to getting time into our synthesizers. We do this using clocks and sequencers. Let's head into VCV rack and see how it's done. So first things first, I'm gonna bring up a clock. This is a super basic clock. It's called clock. <laughs> then let's bring up a basic gate sequencer. This is a 12 channel 16 step gate sequencer. Now here's what we're gonna do. We take the clock output from our clock and put that into the clock input of our sequencer. You're gonna see that it cycles through each step of the sequence. This is how we're gonna get time into our synthesizer. Let's make this do something basic right now. I'm gonna pull up a percussion synthesizer. Let's take this gate output and put that into the gate input on the oscillator side. Let's do a basic four on the floor pattern. Cool, we can go a little faster. Cool, so now what we have here is a kick drum playing a four on the floor pattern. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another little sequence on track number two over here. Take the gate outputs from that and put that into the gate input for the noise side of this percussion synthesizer. Let's take that output and put it into our mixer. Cool. Now we got this little sequence going on. What I'm gonna try to do now is make a third sequence. What we have right now is sort of a kick drum and snare part. In fact, we can also make that a little more interesting. That's sick, okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a hi-hat. I'm gonna do a subtractive synthesizer, but instead of subtracting from a wave, I'm gonna subtract from a noise signal. Let's take the white noise output, put that into the input of our VCA. The envelope output from this ADSR to the VCA CV input, and the output from the VCA to our mixer. I'm gonna make a little envelope that I think looks kind of like a hi-hat. I'm gonna connect the gate input with that gate output. That was a little intense. Headphone warning, but... And looks like if we adjust the decay, we can decide whether we want an open hi-hat or a closed hi-hat.
Okay, we can use that as well. Let's try this out. There we go, that's the groove. Cool. So taking some basic concepts from subtractive synthesis and applying just simple clocks and sequences to them, you can start making a synthesizer play itself. And that brings us on to stage three. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep the same groove but I'm gonna have a generative synthesizer playing around on top of this groove. First off, I'm gonna pull up something called a note sequencer, which is literally a sequencer, but for notes. Let's take the quarter note output into the clock input. So it kind of moves. Okay, cool. Let's connect the resets as well so we can reset all our sequencers from one place. Okay, cool. Let's take the random trigger input as well. We can connect that to the 32. Okay, so that's gonna randomize the note now. What I'm gonna do is make a subtractive synth, but this one's gonna be for pitch. Let's take a wavetable VCO. We'll take the volts per octave from our sequencer into the volts per octave of the wavetable. Let's take the output of the wavetable into a VCA. That VCA is controlled by an envelope. And for fun, Let's also put that VCA through a granular reverb. Sure. And yeah, that's how you make a basic generative synthesizer. Okay, so in today's video, we've covered subtractive synthesis, how we can use this to create pitched instruments as well as percussion-based instruments. We have covered sequencers and how we can bring time into our synthesizers using them. And we've put all of these elements together with a little bit of randomization in order to create our first very, very basic generative synthesizer. So go wild, use these freshly learned skills Make yourself your first modular synth based song. Send it over to me, put it up on YouTube and drop a link to your uploads in the comments below. I'd really love to hear what you come up with. If this video offered you any value, please share it forward to people that you think would benefit from the same. I hope I was able to help you get started with modular synthesis. The link to VCV Rack will be in the description. A huge thanks to them. Thank you for watching. If this brought you any value, please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next one. It's been a long time, but we're back.